we all want to have fun with our dogs. And a lot of the times, especially for me and my dogs, it means hitting the trails and going out into nature to explore and decompress. Part of the importance of that decompression is allowing them freedom outside the city to sniff and to move at their own pace. But we need to make sure that we're abiding by all the laws and regulations. And a lot of times that means we can't let our dogs off leash. And for many dogs, they never reach the level of training that they need in order to be let off the leash safely. But no worries, we can still get on those adventures and let our dog get all the benefits of those long line walks using a long line. Long lines are wonderful tools that we can use, but they can be a bit tricky and a little intimidating. I'm Chelsea with Positive Futures Dog Training and Behavior, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you all the benefits that these leads can have and how to use one safely. Long lines usually average between 15 and 30 feet in length. It's important for us as handlers to learn how to handle the lead before we even connect our dog to it. Because of all this extra material, it's easy for it to get tangled. And the last thing we want is to hurt ourselves or our dogs. To start, I place the loop over my thumb. I slowly wrap the lead from my thumb over my elbow and back. This is a nice way to organize the length of the line and get it into a nice loop. I like to organize the line like this because it makes it easy for me to hold onto one end and allow the dog to move in and out of the other while allowing the bulk of the lead to remain in my hand versus on the ground. Remember that the goal of these lines is to allow our dogs more freedom to explore. So as the dog moves away from me, I can let a loop or two out. And as the dog is coming back towards me, I can loop the line back into my hand in order to prevent tangles and allow any extra lead to stay on the ground, making it more likely for the dog to trip. But before you go and connect your dog to the line, I do recommend that you practice these mechanics on your own. These mechanics can actually be quite tricky. So with a little bit of practice, you can help make this movement into muscle memory so that you have less to think about when you're on the trail with your dogs. After organizing your lead, now you wanna practice your mechanics. I put one hand in charge of holding onto the lead and the other hand in charge of winding and unwinding. For me, the mechanics of winding and unwinding tend to be a little bit more complicated, so I put my dominant hand in charge of that activity. You'll wanna practice these mechanics a few times until you feel comfortable and until the process goes smoothly. Then you're ready to connect your dog. When using a long line, I have my clicker hand and the hand holding onto the bulk of the line as the same hand. Then my other hand, which is actually my dominant hand, is open for managing the wind up and unwinding of the lead and for delivering treats. If you find that these mechanics are still too much to handle, remember that you can always use a verbal marker, yes, instead of using a clicker. Remember the first time that you start practicing with your dog to set yourself up for success. With a little bit extra freedom, your dog might be really excited on a long line. So I like to keep the length short at first to prevent any zoomies or takeoffs. This is less likely then to result in any injury to you or your dog. I start with something simple, something that they know already, like attention. You can either cue your dog or stand and wait until they offer it on their own. This will help you get used to managing the lead. Your dog will get used to having a little more freedom and still doing behaviors and you can work on your treat mechanics. I purposefully chose to practice on pavement here to help reduce the amount of things that my dog could sniff. This makes it a lot easier for me to get the attention from my dog and start building desirable behaviors on this long line right off the bat. As it gets easier for your dog to offer attention and you notice that as soon as your dog is eating the treat, they're snapping their head back around to look at you, that's your signal that you can increase length. So use that dominant hand of yours to release one loop of line and toss that release treat just a little further. This way you can slowly start building distance, reinforcing your dog for attention and allowing them to move a little further away from you. If your dog starts to have trouble, remember that you can just wind one loop of line back up into your hand. And remember, just like when our dogs do well, we can increase their criteria, we can do the same for us. So as you start feeling confident with that line in your hand, clicking and treating, and even unwinding and unwinding the lead, we can start to increase our own criteria. Now I'll start to add a little motion. I click attention, toss my treat, and start to move a little bit. 
As my dog reconnects, I click to reinforce them, toss my treat onto the ground, and move a little more. Remember when you start to keep these sessions short. You can train for two to three minutes at a time and then release your dog to a nearby area to sniff. This way, they're learning how to behave on a long line. They're learning that attention to us, staying close, and connection is a good thing. This way you don't connect your dog to a long line for the first time and they take off and jerk your shoulder out. Pretty soon with just a little bit of practice, you and your dog will be ready to hit the trails for some long line fun.